Hello. It's just the top of the hour, so we'll be getting started in a minute or two. Uh, Russ, you may not have heard, but I uploaded a new deck um, that doesn't have two slides per page. So if either you want to do that or I can present so that people can actually read the slides. I will let you present. Where do I give you permission? You'll have to request permission and you grant it. Uh, Paul did request. I don't see where I grant it. Although the request went away. I gave it to him. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started. It looks like the recording is happening. Um, do, do we have a note taker? That's exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> is is uh, uh, first remind people that the note well, uh, although we're not an ITF group, we agreed to basically follow their the note well. So recall that when you uh, choose to participate. And uh, Paul Hoffman has asked you share screen. So something went wrong before. <laughs> A screen is being shared. Okay, so um, the uh, next thing we need is someone to take notes in the online note taking tool. It's not working, Paul. Is that what I'm get I'm guessing? It is not. It's saying that Chrome needs permission. I just gave it permission. I restarted. It didn't like me. Okay, hang on a second. I'm gonna see if I can get this slides slammed in. Thank you. So, and again, sorry about that. I didn't notice that I saved two up. And the new deck is uploaded. Robert's doing that. I had said that to you guys. Yeah, the new deck is uploaded to the data tracker. I'm trying to figure out in the UI how to cause it to resync. All right. I think you have to go to tools, right? I got it. Okay. That's where it is, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> so, okay. So we still need a note taker. <laughs> That's the two up version. Yeah. Well, I did refresh documents. At interesting because I approved the upload. So uh, we still need a note taker. <laughs> Is someone willing to do that in Etherpad, please? Yeah. And we can just do the two up version if it's not working. Hi, this is are there really only five people here? No. <laughs> Why not? That? Okay. Sure, I'll take notes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Rich.
Looks like we get the two up version. Yeah, let's do that because uh, <laughs> we we've already used five minutes. And right. thank you for taking notes, Rich. And uh, I'm going to turn off my video, and we'll focus on the okay. slides. <clears throat> the clicking the link on the note taking tool seems kind of wonky. Can you just post the link in the chat, somebody? Yeah, I'll go find it. Okay. So you want me to go, Russ? Yes, I do. Okay. So um, Russ asked for a brief overview of the status of these two documents. So that's what I'm giving now. I will do it briefly. Um, I won't break for questions because I don't know how the chairs want to deal with questions. Um, but also I just want to go over what we've done. And again, uh, my apologies for the small text on the screen. Um, my fault completely. So we're going to be talking about two different documents, RFC 7990 updates and RFC 7997 BIS. Uh, 7990 updates are, 7990 is sort of the way that the new way that we do things is put together. So uh, we did an O2 in December, Heather and I did an O2 in December. We've made a couple of changes already based on the list discussion. One of them is changing publication formats to file formats to make it clearer um, for a reader what is being published and such like that. Uh, and by the way, these are not out in a new draft yet. But so these are the things that we've done since the last uh, call. And um, in the section called that was about updating the definitive version of the RFC, we added the sentence that the group seemed to agree on, which is that the RPC will keep a public record of when it reissues uh, and RFC, whoops, there's a typo, um, and give a short description of its reasoning for each change. So that is sort of the compromise between um, it's gonna be a list, you have to go find it and such like that people might want to uh, work on that a bit more. Uh, next slide, Robert. So um, the draft itself, 7990 updates, has a couple of to-dos already in the draft that have not been um, fully uh, fleshed out yet. The first one is um, in the section on HTML, where it says that the um, text format for the JavaScript um, will be clearly marked. And the note is, it's not currently. And so we may just drop that because no one has complained about um, the, CSS, the JavaScript um, in the RFCs at this point. So we might just drop that, um, but that's still open for discussion. And then the next two bullets here are going to be described. Actually, what I say is on the next slide, but it's on the bottom slide here. Um, the, the RSWG discussed making simplifying changes to 7995. 7995 is the PDF format. Um, but note that 799, 7995 is not just about PDF for RFCs. It's about PDFs in general. So we may not want to obsolete it. We might just want to update it for the way we do things. Um, and then also in the section called archive documents, um, there is an RFC that up, um, up till now we've ignored, which is 8153, digital preservation considerations for the RFC series. Um, so now skipping to the slide labeled uh, status number three, there's still an active discussion on not embedding the XML in the PDF. Um, and actually that's going on this morning, I noticed as well. Uh, so if lawyers, and, and th th the reason why we are concerned about this is, is what is the archival version? What's the most useful version for when lawyers say, we wanna know, you know, we want, to know what is RFC, and I've just been pulling out the number 9876 because that hasn't been issued yet, um, and to give us a declaration saying this is that RFC. Um, and so the current situation is that we send them 
the PDF uh, presentation format, which includes the XML. And as noted by Jay this morning, they never really care about the XML, but it's there. Um, if we don't need to embed the XML, creating the PDF is easier. And so it seemed like, and again, this is up to the chairs to call a consensus, seemed to me that most people agreed that we don't really need to embed the XML in the PDF. Um, but when we get to the point of sending something to people say, show us this, or quite frankly, for our archives, we archive everything. Uh, next slide, Robert. Okay, so then um, one last thing that's still in discussion in 7990, I think this was Brian who suggested, right now the draft talks about um, the semantics of the RFC, so that the RPC will um, uh, can make um, XML changes that don't affect the semantics of the RFC. And uh, there was a suggestion, it didn't get uh, a lot of uptake, but I think it's worth looking at again. Do we want to give the RPC a lot more guidance on what that means in this RFC or not? Um, some people are in the, we trust the RPC to do it right. Other people are, we should say to the R RPC what we mean. And, and that latter block of text is more, more definitive there. So that's, that's also open for discussion. Um, switching tracks here to um, RFC 7997 BIS, which is the, you know, at, you know ASCII and Unicode. Uh, there's two questions that are still open, which is do keywords and tags have to be in ASCII? Uh, the uh, 7997 says that they do. Um, we're discussing on the list now whether they don't. Um, and should RFCs con contain non-breaking hyphens and spaces? Um, so next slide, we'll hit the big one, which is keywords and tags. Um, so, so far, my feeling is we have general agreement that keywords can use non-ASCII. Um, and someone suggested, since keywords are free, that we also include the ASCII equivalents of the ones that have non-ASCII. Um, that seems easier. Tags is a much harder discussion, and I think we're going to need to split this out because tags um, are created for section titles. Tags are created for references and so on. And different people had different concerns about the searchability of non-ASCII or flipping it over the, the um, ASCII constraints on things like section titles. So my proposal to the chairs is that we actually split this, sec this discussion out into the various things where tags are, take that back and then put it into the next version of the draft. Um, and I think this is the last slide. Um, oh, I'm gonna, there's been a chat um, question okay. about tags. To say more about tags, is that just anchors in HTML? What, where, what are tags? Uh, so that's actually a good question, and it can be whatever we want. Um, that is, 7997 use certain wording, which I'm not going to shift off my screen to look at, um, but we want to be clear. What 7997 was basically saying is things not in the displayed text should always be ASCII. And um, so now we can say, is that really true? So, for example, keywords. Um, it seems like there was agreement so far on the list uh, that keywords um, can be non-ASCII. Let's look at all of the other things. And the other things might be anchors. The other things might be the reference tags, you know, the stuff that we always put in square brackets and such. Um, and so I want to be clear, I don't think we're done with this discussion, and I think we should split it out more. Um, and then again, I think this is the last bit, which is. Um, should RFCs, that is the final output, contain non-breaking hyphens and spaces? Um, so it's not, what came out of the discussion so far is it's not clear where to put those because you won't think of it unless you're looking at a specific pre presentation format. And what we do know is that documents that have non-breaking hyphens and spaces 
especially in important terms, which is where you often put them because you want to make sure the term all appears on one line. Um, searching for searching for that term with a space instead of a non-breaking space or a hyphen instead of a non-breaking hyphen might fail. Um, so maybe we keep using them, but more sparingly was one of the suggestions. Someone suggested a no BR tag um, to help the renderers. So this is also unclear. Um, okay, so I think that was it. I think the last slide was let's discuss stuff. Um, and so that's it. So I will turn this back over to the chairs uh, for them to figure out how they want to move forwards. So I think we'd like to work through each of those open issues first. And uh, let, let's just do them in the order they're on the slide. Um, Robert, could you put that slide back? <laughs> Last page. So um, let's start with the, do we want to uh, keep all keywords and tags in ASCII? Let's start there. Who wants to pick, advocate for one of the positions? Paul? So my view is generally at, um, anything that's in Unicode is just fine. Um, yes, some people can't type it, but that's true anyways. That would be true for the body text. So my general view is that anything in the document, whether it's visible or not, should be um, spelled correctly, as it were. T tags Robert? Or, or just keywords. Ah, no, I, okay. I said everything. I, I meant everything. <laughs> you meant everything. Okay. Now, I just wanted to get that. Um, Robert? The text would provide guidance for um, having the content of these things actually being um, The utility would, I guess what I'm getting for is, is that, as I brought up earlier, the, the somebody's got to make a judgment call about whether or not somebody can put a poo emoji into one of these things. And does the text leave that judgment with the RFC editor? Karsten? An interesting case where we used the uh, a uh, character that is usually rendered in color. And uh, we are trying to avoid color in uh, RFCs. So the RPC made us change to a uh, monochrome, uh, to a character with a typically monochrome rendition. Um, so I think that the, the, the everything in Unicode Go's approach is not quite going to work. It's going to be more complicated but ASCII is not a useful boundary for this discussion. So I'm talking about keywords at the moment because I have no idea what tags are. Um, so if, if we are talking about keywords, this is the search interface we give the, the bibliog bibliography uh, people. And that, of course, has to cannot be limited to ASCII. There's absolutely no reason. For it. John. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to say briefly what I said in the note of the list. Um, I'm concerned that as soon as we say anything in Unicode is okay, that the comments which were made earlier about not breaking spaces and hyphens and searching becomes a tiny, tiny piece of the issues. Uh, we end up with things that you can't find because you, because the user types them in in a different way and. Uh, then they're stored and that turns into normalization problems. Uh, there are right to left problems and left to right problems and things which don't normalize and all kinds of things that I don't have any objection to are allowing, as long as we carefully think them out and document the implications. Um, I think, as I said in the email note, 
we're a little bit too prone to think about this in terms of uh, what, for lack of a better term, and the hope that it won't offend anyone, is 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 uh, is decorated Roman script, or a de- Roman script, Latin script with decorations, um, and uh, and we don't in our examples tend to think about uh, right to left scripts, scripts which don't have word delimiters in them, in the usual, in, in visible word delimiters in them, and all kinds of other things which are interesting and important to those native language, important and native to those languages and writing systems, but can get to be very, very complicated, both in terms of the reader and somebody doing searching, and for that matter, in terms of proper handling by the RPC, because as far as I know, their skill set, their required skill set for participants doesn't include knowing how to deal with all this stuff. So a, a question, John. You, you said earlier that um, this is many things are okay with you if, quote, we document them. Um, so uh, the, the we in the current example is the RSWG, which writes policy documents. Are you suggesting a policy document that the RSWG writes, or are you suggesting um, some sort of usage document that the RPC with maybe the assistance of other people write? Uh, I am suggesting a policy document which the RSWG writes, which specifies what is permitted and what is not permitted, and more important, how to handle various things that might be permitted but would cause edge cases. Now, to come back to the last half of your question, uh, I don't see any possibility of the RSDWG being able to write such a document without help from the RPC and a bunch of its friends. But it's really a policy document in terms of what is allowed, what is disallowed, what is encouraged or not, what requires special consultation and the like. Um, A a follow-up. because there is a difference, it seems to me, between, you know, a policy document which has warnings about using certain kinds of constructs, about what kinds of constructs are reasonable, what kind of constructs are not, versus a um, uh, code point by code point evaluation of what Unicodes are reasonable and which ones are not. Are you suggesting the former or the latter? I, I, I consider the latter hopeless under any set of circumstances. Thank you. And- and, and I think we have worked examples of it being impossible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Paul. Uh, Paul. So I apologize for um, slot, the slide that talks about tags. Um, uh, in fact, 7997, the exact wording is uh, keywords as tagged with the keyword element, and citation tags as defined in the anchor attributes um, can contain only ASCII characters. So going, uh, uh, Carson asked, I don't know what tags are. Clearly, I didn't either when I did this. I apologize. Um, So tags being the stuff we put in between square brackets in the body of the text, and then you click on them, and you go down to the bottom, and you see the reference. I generally disagree with John on we need to specify this. I trust the RPC to make good judgments and to come to us when they have questions. Um, Having said that, I wouldn't object to a short list. And I think the most important ones that John listed are for the two things here, which are keywords and for stuff in square brackets, um, would be uh characters that are often um shown in color um which are easy to avoid because those are mostly examples um and right to left and and yes right to left causes all sorts of pain and i believe it's okay for us to say right to left uh should not be used except in examples even though that would restrict us from correctly spelling the titles of some articles and such like that I think that kind of guidance, as long as we keep it short and we don't go off into edge cases that probably no one wanted anyways, um, seems just fine. Thanks. Okay, Karsten, you're up. 
Yeah, I just wow, this thing starts slowly. Um, I just wanted to to agree with uh, Paul that uh, indeed we should not try to make a definitive list here. This is there's a lot of uh, reasonableness check that the RPC needs to do in the end in collaboration with with the authors. Um, so uh, I, I also just wanted to point out we we actually have two different kinds of anchors. And, and one of those are those uh, which actually are visible, which are the targets of the display reference uh, mechanism. And then there is the, the question, how do the XML IDs uh, look like? And we have a definition of that in XML that, that uh, we probably aren't that interested in. Uh, but we are really talking about the thing that display reference points to. So this is, uh, these can start with a digit, for instance. 3GPP. Alexis, you're in the queue. It's your turn. I don't know if others are having the trouble I am, but uh, it seems like connection with the server just got wonky. Yes, just got fully kicked out and back in again. <laughs> Okay, Alexis, it's your turn. Uh, I, I wanted to echo what I believe Karsten already said in the in the chat and what Paul just said, uh, over specifying exactly what has to happen uh, or what can't happen in here seems like a recipe for causing ourselves problems down the line. And I would discourage us from being overly specific. Um, I do think that it is useful to have examples where we think it is likely okay, like if we're trying to make sure that we're spelling people's proper names correctly or something like that. Um, but I would leave it up to the RPC's discretion. They have a lot of people to talk to and ask questions about. Okay, thank you, Jay. Thanks. Um, I agree as well as I'm sure you'd expect not to over specify here. Um, I do think that there is a implicit um, lack of agreement about what a keyword is and what it does, judging from some of the things that I've heard. Um, I wonder if we need to just be tighter on the definition of what a keyword is and what it's used for, so that that actually is what drives the decision about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Um, as I noted in the chat, we have the um, question of how this relates to the, the policy that the RFC series is only in English. Um, so are we, uh, if somebody, you know, has a, a keyword that is now clearly not an English word, is that acceptable? Is that changing the nature of the series? So those are the type of things I think perhaps could be teased out a little bit more. And I would like to hear the a response from somebody about the issue that the RFC is English. What, what are keywords doing that are not English? even though some of those might be non-ASCII. Um, I, I would like to know why people think we need an expansive list. I'm not hearing anyone take your bait. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> John, go ahead, Levine. I'll, 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 I'll take your bait. I, I can think of some hypothetical situations where there are technical terms, like not so much in, in, in computing, but there's certainly a place that like in, in physics and chemistry, there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of technical terms which are German and have you know, umlauts and, and assets and stuff like that. 
but that's kind of a stretch. I mean, my feeling is I'm I basically align with the people that that these documents are in English. The keywords should be in English. And if we if we want to if we want to talk about other languages, that's a much that's a much bigger debate to have some other time. Go ahead, Paul. So two things. One is, as someone pointed out, some of the keywords might have symbols, uh, Greek symbols, and that would not be in English. So we could actually use the Greek symbol. I think that was Ecker who pointed that out. But also, let me read what we have in 7997, which is the only 7990 doesn't seem to mention the word English. Um, maybe there are earlier RFC series documents that do, but what 7997 says, while English remains the required language of the series, that doesn't mean it's the only language that can be used in a document. And sorry, I missed John in the queue, unless there was some hopping around I didn't see. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I have far fewer problems with keywords than with tags. Uh, but I think here, if we can avoid anything in Unicode or anything in any language and write some policy level rules, which makes sense, then it's probably OK. And uh, mathematical writing keywords that use some Greek, uh, probably OK. Um, um uh, expressions in uh, uh, Mongolian or uh, or some dialects that use Arabic script uh, maybe not okay uh, but uh, but I think we need to think about the reasons why someone would, would want to do this and then work backwards to the to the rules rather than saying well all Unicode and uh, and the RPC should decide this is an area where I trust the RPC, but I think in part to protect them, it'd be good to have some high level policy level guidance if we're going to do this at all. And again, I'm worried about the search problem and related things as well. I think the full text search problem is especially interesting. But uh, when it comes to keywords, how many people really use keywords to find the RFC they care about? Do, and how do we know? Russ, uh, we, 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 we don't know, but I know that if one goes to a general purpose search engine and asks, um, where does the IETF describe foo, that those search engines seem to be looking for foo keywords. Um, so there, there may be a bunch of invisible cases. I, I just don't know. I, I know I don't spend a lot of time as an RFC author thinking about what the right keywords are, you know, beyond the very top level things that might appear in the abstract, right? And one of the interesting questions might be to ask the RPC whether part of their agenda is to try to tease out good keywords from the authors. Whether it should be or shouldn't be is another probably probably another policy question, but that bears directly on the questions you're asking, Russ. Yeah, you know, they always ask at Auth48. <laughs> I just, you know, yeah. that's right, that's pretty late. <laughs> one of them appears to be in the queue. Uh, Gene. Yes, um, about keywords. Uh, yes, the RPC asks authors to provide any keywords during Auth48 if they have not already done so. Um, there is not an effort to, say, ensure keywords are cons consistent across RFCs that may have something to do with each other. So we don't have like a controlled vocabulary um, for keywords. Uh, and no, we cannot provide data on um, who's searching for what. Um, on, you know, did somebody type SSH in the, in the search box and did they pull up the documents? 
Um, note that keywords, um, you should put them in quotes when you search on them. And um, also, um, I believe most people find our RFCs through the larger search engines rather than coming to rfceditor.org and using our search functionality. Um, but again, it would be nice to have better data on that. I'm sure your last point is correct because you can do that from the browser bar and not have to click extra steps. Okay, um, I think we could summarize that um, people would prefer that keywords be in English, uh, which is not to say that they need to be ASCII and that uh, we need to have a better definition of tags, which Paul helped us with uh, getting to, um, and that we want a very, very high level statements here to leave the details to the RPC. Does anyone disagree with that summary? I, I think there was a caveat on English um, that was there are, you know, other technical terminology or uses like um, arithmetic symbols, um, Greek for assorted things like that, that there would be an exception, but that um, I think you're right with regard to preference. Yes. Okay. That, that's where I was going, and I think you're but, right. And that's where the judgment part comes in. Yeah. Yeah. John. I, I think you and Pete just said what, about what I was going to say. I think you want to allow the RPC to allow exceptions, but the language should be normally ASCII. Normally English. You normally. said language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One's a character set. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, we got through a slide, and I think we, we got uh, some basic agreement non-breaking hyphens and spaces. I think we need to uh, walk through that one and see if there's any policy level uh, consensus. Karsten. Well, I'd rather get rid of them and, and have a Nobia element. Um, but uh, since we have them in, in tons of RFCs, uh, uh, I think right now we should accept that these are in there. So we have the non-breaking uh, characters, hyphen and space, and we also have uh, something. Is it the word join? I always conf confuse uh, which one it is uh, that we actually can use for, for doing a non-breaking uh, uh, boundary between two characters uh, otherwise. So if we can all replace this with no BR for for all reasonable applications, I would be happy. Go ahead, Paul. I would I would like to see us not using them at all. Um, they uh, I I believe the again I think that they're mostly used um, in important terms, and therefore that reduces the searchability. Um, I think that um, especially with the hyphens, a break across the end of the line, most readers understand that that may or may not be um, something important. Um, I, I think that going back to the principle of who's the RFC for, it's really for people develop, you know, like, like the primary group, the first group is people who are developing um, uh, applications using our protocols and such uh, are best served by no, uh, by uh, the greatest searchability uh, and the greatest ability to copy and paste in a sensible fashion. Um, and that means just don't use them. Karsten, you're back. Yeah, so Nobia has the advantage that it doesn't break uh, copy and paste. Um, so it would be real. Uh, benefit. Um, 
why are people using non-breaking spaces and, and uh, non-breaking hyphens? Uh, well, in, in some cases, it's just ugliness. So for instance, our RFC 2019, 2119 template um, has the uh, phrase BCP 14 in a place that in most documents breaks. So you have BCP on one, line and the next line we have 19 so that that that's an aesthetics uh, point but right now i'm i'm working in auth 48 on one document that actually has tables with uh, pieces of language uh, in them and uh, i mean computer language and uh, breaking there is really breaking semantics so we do need some form of, of preventing breaking when it, it uh, would uh, break the example. So I uh, am not seeing anybody else who wants to share a view. Is it as simple as avoid them uh, uh, wherever possible and, and define the, uh, no break, uh, for the XML. And now of course, three people jumped in the, in the queue. Go ahead, John. I, I, despite my often repeated objections to, uh, to writing formatting into the XML, I'm having visions of an alternative to these two pieces of Unicode being marking up don't 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 break a, a don't break this element followed by uh, whatever text isn't supposed to be broken followed by a close don't break this element. Um, one could do that whether it's the right thing to do or not I don't know, but it would address some of the things that have been said, which is that some of the sometimes keeping these things together is uh, is substantively and semantically important, and if uh, if special Unicode character tricks are the wrong answer to that, then that would be a different solution. Okay, Jean? I just wanted to um, say that the RPC does not add these unless we have to. Uh, I gave examples on list about trying to get a table and the text output to be to, to fall within uh, the limits of um, how big a table can be. And we try hard not to use these XML entities. So we will work to try different formatting tricks before resorting to these entities. And um, for instance, also, Let's say there is a hyphenated term, technical term in the RFC. We don't add, say, non-breaking hyphen uh, for that term throughout the document. Uh, it might only go in that one table instance or if the, the table is messing with it. Uh, because sometimes also table formatting can break things in unfortunate ways. Um, but so the RPC tries not to use these entities, um, but only as a last resort. And also the BCP14 boilerplate text. Unfortunately, if um, the non-breaking space is not used, then BCP14 is, is broken in the boilerplate text. So it crosses two lines. Um, but wanted to ask, so what's it mean if we decide we don't support this going forward? Or um, what can we use for some of these instances? Paul? So I'm convinced by what Gene and Carson just said about tables. Um, I don't. I tend not to have tables in my documents, so I, I wasn't thinking of those. So I would say that um, non-breaking hyphens and spaces in tables is fine, and we can say that in this document. 
Um, the BCP 14 thing, I don't freaking care. A reader who is reading a line that ends with the word BCP and then sees a 14 over here understands it. It's a little bit ugly in the text version. That doesn't show up as nearly as, as often in, in the HTML version. But even then, it is perfectly understandable. So I would say I'm happy if we limit um, non-breaking hyphens and spaces to keeping um, tables technically correct. A uh, question for Paul, Gene, others who have mentioned it. Uh, what if instead of using those, we went with a no BR tag? Would that be acceptable? Uh, so I'll jump in since you named me. It would be acceptable, but it's going to take us way too long to get there. I would say for now, Karsten said that he's got you know a table in Auth 48 or at least in the in the RC editor queue where this is needed. Keep using them in the tables, Karsten. Yeah, so um, tables came up because we mentioned them in th this conversation. Um, so to me, it, it's generally proof by lack of imagination uh, to to uh, turn this in, into a hard and fast rule. Um, I think that that the guidance that they should be used sparingly um, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think fixing the BCP14 problem really is worth it. So I completely disagree with Paul uh, on this one. Um, but uh, maybe that's because uh, I spend too much time in my life with typographers. Um, so I, I have a certain quality uh, uh, sentiment about documents that, that may be different from, from many other technical um, authors. Oh, and, and yes, no, we are what, what fix all this. So uh, yes, go ahead with that and let's get, fix the, this takes 10 years to do problem that we seem to be having. Okay, Jay. Thanks. I, I don't have a view on whether on uh, the non-breaking space bit, but I do have a view on no BR. Um, I don't particularly like it because it's purely a um, uh, the, the presentational tag. It has no semantics behind it. And from much of the um, stuff that we've talked about before, before, there are a relatively small number of cases of where an OBR is used that could be have a better be considered with a semantic tag around them, such as um, term, for example, or something like that. Um, and I agree with Paul, it's a, it's a significant amount of work to understand how such a um, tag could be used because you have to understand whether the tag is, um, uh, you know, an inline one is which things is it allowed in, um, what happens if it's something else is nested inside it and all of that sort of stuff. Um, it just gets complicated at that point. So um, I, I, without commenting on whether or not we have the no spaces, I just have those issues with the no BR proposal. And Karsten? Sorry, forgot to take myself out of the queue, but now that, that I'm in there, um, I think we have had the discussion about semantic tags for a little bit more than 40 years. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed much of it, um, but uh, I, I am also aware of the fact that uh, English language and, and documents written in English language are not entirely pure trees of, of uh, computer science uh, information. So we always have needed tweaks and we will always need uh, tweaks. And uh, saying if a tag is not semantic, it doesn't have semantics, th that's wrong. Okay, so I think everybody agrees we should avoid them when we can, but there's cases where we will need uh, to continue to use non-breaking hyphens and spaces in the near term, and that we need uh, to take to the list whether no BR is a better long-term answer. Is, is that correct? Uh, this is Paul quickly. I don't think it's correct since we don't have 7991 open at the moment, the last bit. 
I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, that goes back to uh, Karsten's uh, uh, point about when we find a problem, how long it takes to fix it. Uh, but Karsten says open <laughs> 7991. <laughs> okay. So uh, if I omit the last part and say that we need to keep the non-breaking hyphens and spaces uh, to deal with uh, uh, the especially tables, but we want to uh, use them as sparingly as possible because of the hindrance they uh, impose on searching. Okay. Well, we're, we're down to 10 minutes, so I'm not sure we should open a new subject uh, at this stage. Is there something short that others would like to talk about? Yes, Paul. Um, so this is the question of who is us opening topics. Um, as I uh, indicated earlier in the slides, um, the including XML in, I'm sorry, in, in, yes, including the XML and the PDF, making the PDF special and such is still an open topic. Did you want Heather and I to be, uh, did you and Pete want Heather and I to be leading that or are you folks gonna be leading that with um, specific uh, point questions for us? So on the, on the mail list that we've just begun having that topic uh, about the, um, need for a special tool and if we stopped doing that we could we'd have a lot more choices in tools and alexis today uh suggested that we talk about uh using pdf a instead of pdf a-3 um are there other aspects to it than that uh, for me, the question is, do we need PDFA at all? If if PDF is now just a presentation format, um, PDFA versus PDF versus whatever else are all renderable. Um, and let's remember, PDF, I, I mean, we can spend as much time on this as we want, but PDF is the least used format among the groups that we care most about, developers, protocol developers, other groups just looking at our work, most of them probably still use the text or the HTML version. PDF is third most important. Maybe we just start stop talking about it. <laughs> Interesting. It, it, it is the most used in the legal community. Uh, Elliot. Hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, just a question for the chairs, really, which is, do you guys want to uh, Proffer a, a, another interim bet uh, between now and the IETF meeting. Yeah, we haven't talked about it yet. It might be useful and might choose a different time zone to get a few more people involved. Yeah, it's very clear that uh, <laughs> at least two people who wanted to be here couldn't be here uh, because of the uh, trying to find a place that worked Europe and California. <laughs> Um, whereas it was, it's very clear that we eliminated uh, the people who live in, in the Eurasia uh, area. So anyway, Alexis. Uh, I just wanted to say, I actually agree that we could remove uh, PDF A specifically. Um, I think that's fine. It's, it's as long as we're saying, you know, whichever one the, RPC currently wants or the currently used one or, you know, whatever. Um, I trust this community not to do something ridiculous with the PDF. Um, on the legal stuff, I think it's perfectly acceptable to tell a lawyer, here's the definitive version of the RPC in XML. For your convenience, we have also given you the PDF uh, to read, um, but the XML is always the source of truth. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Um, so it, it just seems like we're causing ourselves problems by embedding the XML that we don't need to have. Uh, personal agreement with that. Uh, Jay, go ahead. Thanks. Um, the, the question of what we give lawyers, I don't think should hold up, um, what appears otherwise to be very strong agreement that we stop embedding, um, 
uh, I, I personally don't think there's any place for even for any mention of what we give the lawyers in this. But um, assuming there is, I think that's a separate conversation for us to have. And we should just go ahead with the um, removing the XML because because there's literally no um, disagreement about that. Paul. Uh, since it, um, I'm, thank you, Jay. I, I think now I, I didn't realize we were already on the same page on that. That's great. Um, I will start a 7995 BIS document. That is not something that obsoletes it. I'm sorry, 7995 updates document um, that simply says RFCs, you know, there will be a PDF output. Go look at 7990 BIS. So a super short document. Um, if people want to grind about all of the other stuff that's in 7995, um, I do not want to be the author on that. So, uh, Paul, is there a reason not to put that updates information into 7990-BIS and have it update 7995? Yes, because people, uh, we keep getting people saying, well, I read this RFC and it doesn't seem to be updated because we don't have a way for people easily looking at an RFC to know it has been updated. So something that updates it even minorly, even in a page or two, will appear to them much better. Okay. Uh, it's an unfortunate <laughs> part <laughs> of, of our world. Um, uh, Miria has tried to work on this. I've tried to work on this. I don't want to work on it for another year or two because in between what we're doing now and that discussion is the errata discussion. Yep, got it. Yep. Okay, nope. appreciate it. Okay, so I think we actually reached consensus of the people here that stop embedding is the right answer and it doesn't have to be A or A3. And, and yeah, I think there's still some discussion, at least in the chat room, about whether uh, recommendations for A are a good thing or not. But certainly the embedding, um, uh, I, I think... We're, we're zeroing in, so I think we should post that to the list as if you have objections, if you have comments on this. Yes, I'm yeah. hoping we can say the people on the call came to these yep. decisions. If you disagree, please speak now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Uh, all right. Well, given that we're down to three minutes, I want to thank everybody. I think this was a very productive call. And yes, uh, Elliot, we'll try and schedule one before uh, Brisbane. Uh, maybe not as, uh, maybe in a different time zone, uh, centered time zone anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll do a doodle. Thank you all. All right. Thank you and so thank much. Thank you, Rich, for typing, uh, typing away in the, the room. I was watching it. It was well done. Thank you, Rich.